factories out of China and diversifying them in various locations as well. So even though there may be economies of scale and having some of those conversations, let's say in one geographic location, now there's focus on moving them to, let's say, India or some of the other areas. So you don't have the same risks popping up again from a localization point of view. Yeah, that's a, that's a big that's a big challenge. Um, we're seeing a lot of conversations right now around uh, localization uh, in terms of nearshoring and onshoring. Right. So companies that are looking to move production or source products closer to home to uh, reduce the risk uh, and the length of their supply chains. So Mexico, Canada, and even in domestically into the U.S. Um, is a big area. I don't think that we'll be replacing China as the main source of our, right. our manufactured goods, but I definitely think of the the China plus one model as a uh, as a, a stepping stone to enhance and to um, transform their supply chains to, to reduce that risk. Absolutely. And uh, if our audience have any comments, I see Gary. Please go ahead, chime right in. Yeah, uh, I, I'm. I get a lot of feeds and quite a lot of feeds about this localized, they're bubbling up the localization versus, you know, keeping the extended supply chains. I think these are decisions that companies make with the help of government in terms of quotas and tariff restrictions, all that kind of stuff. But I think it's still a company issue. But much of the commentary is converting this trading situation into a political one like oh you're being protectionist blah 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 but in the same breath they're saying we ought to do more for our local people uh, and i think it's a really interesting kind of narrative that they can't get clear as to what they're trying to say we want to support our own workers i think first uh, it's not anti-china or anything it's just that in canada we've got a huge amount of people are going to be made formally unemployed. Mm -hmm. We need to find work for them. And I think it's very uh, virtuous to actually find a way in our supply chain design and our businesses to actually find a way of doing that locally. I, I don't know what your, your, your two views are on that. Yeah, that's a great question there. A great comment, uh, Gary. Um, and, you know, I, I, when I hear that, I the commentary that I've heard on in, in the news and, and with conversations is that the the jobs move to China. Well, the jobs don't move themselves. Um, the countries don't take jobs. The countries and governments don't create jobs. It's the individual businesses that make the business decision to mm. move their production or source from a different locale to serve a different market. Um, so I think the role of the government and the political role is important but it's really about creating and setting the stage for job creation and creating the a positive business environment for the right outcome that they're trying to achieve which is a, a healthier level of employment um, and you're right we need to re-employ uh, all these people that have been, have been impacted by covid disruptions um, but in general we need to look at which industries are generating uh, growth for our economy and which industries can generate jobs. Um, right. Automation won't go away. Um, it will continue to expand. So we need to, you know, this isn't a, a one-off solution. This is an ongoing uh, adaptation to a new economy. Yeah, actually, I'll add two things to it. So to me, you're absolutely right, Gary and Nick. There's a couple things that are actually missing on this chart. One would be from a policy point of view, right? Um, the things that influence business decisions. Because um, if I look back, uh, most of the business decisions that become trends in a particular geography are supported by the government's providing, um, you know, tax shelter or whatever you want to call it. Um, some, uh, you know, buffers for companies um, from that point of view. The second thing would be definitely jobs, but also re-education, right? Because um, certain things, let's face it, just won't come back. Um, as Nick said, automation is coming and it's probably accelerating. I can't remember, again, I would have to go back and search for the link of this article, scrolled by so many of them over the last little while. One of them actually had a graph that said, yes, the, um, the growth that technology provides is exponential, but the growth that we have seen in the last six months since we found out about COVID has accelerated the technology support into some of these industries by two years. 
So if it wasn't for COVID, you would not have seen the same level of progress that you've seen in the last